hear now from Simran Preet Kaur. She's a student from Notting Hill. Simran Preet. Um, when I'm out with my friends um, and my Muslim friends in public, people still stare at their Islamic dress. What will the candidates do to stop division in the communities? Zach Goldsmith. From a personal point of view, I'm very relaxed about what people wear. We are a wonderful, diverse, multicultural city. We're a successful city. Um, we are a harmonious city. If you look across the water at Paris, a beautiful city architecturally, great history, but it's a divided city. And there, and there are families leaving Paris now who've been there for three generations because they no longer feel safe in Paris. They no longer be, believe they have a future. And I don't think we should ever take the harmony in London that we have, the cohesion we have, for granted. And but people but should, question people should, is that there's not so, enough so, cohesion. So, but, she but, still feels... Uh, absolutely that right. if she dresses in a particular way that uh, people look at her strangely. That's not yeah. cohesion. It, it's, it's Relatively speaking, relatively speaking, London is a harmonious city because, I think, of the diversity that we have, but we need to protect that. Your question was about traditional... about the hijab. I, I didn't hear the first part of your question, or the niqab. Or I, I think that's what you said. Um, I, I'm very relaxed about that. I mean, obviously, when it comes to... I don't to think airports, it's you she's worried about. It's the people she... <laughs> but, but you're, asking about what I, you're asking about what, well, I, what position I would take as, as a mayor of London. How will you stop I, people I think people should be free to be... It? People should be free to be themselves. There is a, sep a separate issue of prejudice, of hate crime in London. And hate crime is one of the crimes over the last year that has gone through the roof, whether it's Islamophobia or uh, a, a hatred against people with disabilities, whether it's anti-Semitism. We saw record amounts of anti-Semitism last year. And th the mayor does have a direct role in challenging this. The mayor doesn't micromanage the police, but the mayor does set the priorities. And I said in my manifesto that I want hate crime and stamping down on hate crime to be a top priority because I don't believe... It's much of a leap from verbal violence, the kind of stuff you get on social media, on Twitter, for example, on a daily basis, uh, to a, a physical aggression All right. that we get on our streets. So let me ask you this, because you, you take that position with our mm. audience tonight. But Yvette Cooper has said, the Labour politician, that your campaign and your attacks on Sadiq Khan has now reached, quote, a racist scream. Well, That's I'm very, you. I'm very pleased to say that Sadiq himself, in our last debate, distanced himself from those comments. I mean, it's, it is an outrageous thing to say uh, by, uh, by Yvette Cooper. My campaign has been overwhelmingly a positive one. So what are you saying about Sadiq Khan? Is he an extremist? I have made it very, very clear that I have never suggested that Sadiq Khan is an extremist in any way at no, all. No, but not your campaign have, team has. They have not. Are you not that, taking that the that high a, moral ground uh, where Andrew, other people Andrew, do your dirty work? Andrew, that is, that is how it works? Andrew, that is not true. No one associated with my campaign team has called Sadiq Khan extreme, and he will, I'm sure, back up what I'm saying. No one has suggested he's extreme. But well, they're pumping out plenty well, of information no, about I, some of the people he speaks with. So can you tell this tonight Allow me to it is not point. your view that Sadiq Khan is in any way an extremist. A hundred percent my view. My view is that he is not an extremist. My, my, the point I have made and Londoners have made and the newspapers have made on a, a regular basis over the last few weeks and months is that Sadiq Khan has given uh, platforms and oxygen and even cover to people who are extremists and I think that is dangerous. It's not a question of Sadiq Khan being an extremist. I don't think anyone other than a few nut jobs on Twitter have suggested that. But the reality is that there is a question of judgment there. We have a massive battle on our hands, an ideological battle, a battle that right now we're probably right. losing and it doesn't help to give platforms or oxygen or cover to people who mean to do us harm and in your <laughs> in your time Sadiq, and you have been associated with a number of extremists and terrorist sympathizers haven't you I i've never hidden from the fact uh, andrew and i'll say this to your audience in the london is that I, I was a human rights lawyer i acted for some pretty unsavory uh characters one of the great things about this city is we believe in the rule of law and the presumption of innocence and due process. Look, my grandparents were immigrants from India to Pakistan. My parents immigrants from Pakistan to London. There's no other city in the world I'd want to raise my daughters. We don't just tolerate difference. Uh, we celebrate and uh, respect it. My campaign is in support of Jews, Christians, Muslims, uh, Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists, those who aren't a member of an organised faith, old, young, rich, poor. We even have Northerners uh, supporting uh, my campaign. There's space for everyone. And the important thing is this, we want to bring communities together, but you're right, there is a challenge in relation to integration. There is a challenge in relation to prejudice, which leads to the hate crime we've seen over the last year, an increase of 60% of anti-Semitic hate crimes, an increase of more than 34% Islamophobic hate crimes, more than almost 30% homophobic crimes. That's why, if I was the mayor of London, the priority for the Met Police Service would be addressing the issue of hate crime. Right, but Sadiq, it wasn't just your job as a law lawyer for liberty 
that brought you into touch with unsavoury characters. Lawyers often have to do that. You appeared on platforms with them. Suleiman Ghani, uh, who was a supporter of Islamic State, you appeared on a platform with him nine times during these one of these one of these times. You must have found out what he really believed in. Look, there are lots of campaigns and issues that I've been involved in as chair of liberty, as a human rights lawyer, and as a politician, which had cross-party support. Do from, you regret you, appearing I'll, on platforms with people like that? No, I regret giving the impression I subscribe to their views, and I've been quite clear that I find their views abhorrent. But, for example, <laughs> let me give you an example uh, that Zach Goldsmith and I campaigned together with. We both campaigned together against the USA UK extradition treaty. Some of the people being extradited were unsavory. But the point is this I've got a plan to address the issue of extremism and radicalis radicalization. And I've been clear, Andrew, I've suffered from extremism. When I first stood for Parliament in 2005, there were extremists campaigning against me in the mosque I used to worship, been saying I was going to hell because I was encouraging people to right. take part in democracy. And I suffered death threats all right. when I voted for same-sex uh, marriage. Now, Andrew may say it's all right, but it's not all right no, for extremists. No, I just need to bring in some other people because this threat. is becoming a monologue. Uh, <laughs> Caroline Pigeon, yeah, How, what do you make of the tone of this campaign? First of all, I'll just say I'm Caroline Pigeon, and I'm the only candidate who's had the last eight years working day in, day out at City Hall for London, holding the Met Police Commissioners, four of them, to account. But uh, it's the campaign, I think I'm fed up of this mudsling. I want to get back to the issue that was raised by um, the member of the audience. It's really important that everyone can feel welcome in London. Imagine walking around and not feeling <laughs> you're part of London. It is impossible for many of us to imagine just by what you're wearing, what you look like, and that has to stop. And as Mayor of London, I'll be passionate to celebrate all communities in London and work with all communities, but we've got to tackle hate crime. We need to make sure we have a new strategy that improves the reporting, investigating and prosecuting of hate crime. All right. We need to reverse the cuts in community policing. I'm the only candidate who will fund 3,000 additional police officers on the tube, on the trains and on the buses to make sure we feel safe and make sure we tackle this increase in hate crime and sexual offences we're seeing across the capital.